life insurance, the lights in your house, come on somebody, the toothpaste you put in your mouth to brush your teeth, those are real issues you got to take care of. Yeah. Yeah. So when your money is hit, when your income is hit, you, you ought to get upset. Yeah. Why? Because so much that is value to it is, is in jeopardy. Yes, but the Bible said don't just keep worrying about it. Trust God that he's going to turn it around. Yeah. But if you're, gonna, if you're just going to keep acting that way, you need to act on making a difference to your income. So if your income down, you need to find ways to get, come on somebody, to get it up. Don't just keep sitting on the home, at home talking about I'm going to pray about it and watch and read some scriptures and, and look at Eddie Long or whoever on TV, Joel Osteen, talking all motivational. No, I'm going to get up. I'm going to put in some applications. I'm going to look into some investment counts, IRA CDs, or whatever I got to tap myself into to make a difference so I can keep putting food on the table. Because God has given me too much brains and too much wisdom to lie to go waste. Some people waste the wisdom that they got. Sometimes you, you are the answer to your own prayer. You don't have to pray, Lord, if it's your will for me to go to the bathroom, God put something in your body to let you know it's time to go to that place. You ain't got to sit on your knees and pray to God and open up three or four scriptures. Lord, if it's your will for me to drink some water, I'm just going to drink some. If it ain't your will, no. Your mouth is thirsty. Your stomach is talking to you. You know you're dehydrated. You better drink some water before you pass out. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. But we must see God with diligence. It's sad that, that's why I say, it's sad that people's lives are so impacted by the world because the things that they should be diligent at seeking, they're not. And then a lot of people reject God. See, those you can't talk to. That's what the Bible says. He sent them out and choose. And, and everyone that rejected him, he didn't say, keep one child, baby, come on. No. He said, get in your car. Go, come on, somebody. Let your two decision makers, which is your feet, let them start heading to the next house because somebody want to hear about God. Amen. And you ain't got time to be burning gas and wasting time and spitting wind on a relative or on a close friend because they want to keep rejecting Christ. No, you got other little kids and other kids that have been raised in broken homes and messed up homes and, and bad in the environments and thugs and pushers and they just want somebody to talk to them. No, they don't want $50 or $5. They don't even want a bill paid. They just want somebody positive with God on the inside of their heart to stop by their house just to see how they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you first have to have love. Yeah. See, that's real love. See, love go beyond just I say I love you. Yeah. Love is an action word. Yeah. So, oh, come on somebody. Love is an action word. See, some of us for years down the line, I love you, I love you, I love you. But you're not producing what your mouth is. Come on somebody. What your mouth is saying. Amen. Your, your action should produce what your mouth is saying, what your heart is saying. You should be able to cook something for somebody without running and talking about it to somebody else. No, God has put too much potential on the inside of you and bless your hands to be an excellent cook. Oh, come on, somebody, to be able to sow and be able to give to people. God has blessed your hands. He has blessed you with wisdom. And now you want to sit on the porch and keep it all to yourself. Oh, come on, somebody. God want more out of you. But you got to give yourself away so you can be used by God. Christ-like ways cannot be exemplified in your life if you are not heeding to the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside. So you have to heed to the voice of the Lord in order to see results. Some people say, well, you can just tie the tie. You can tie it all you want and still won't get no results. Yes. Yes, why? Because you can't live your life any kind of way and expect God's blessings. That's what the Bible says, it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligent to the voice of the Lord, that blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You can't be overtaken by blessings, let this one do that in the house and that one do this and you got this in your heart and you got jealousy and backbiting and envy and strife and malice and all this other stuff in your heart when you're supposed to be producing long suffering, patience, peace and love. No, you're producing all this corrupt fruit but now you're going to sit here and lay prostrate before God like you're doing him a favor? No, you might well get off your knees, repent to God, and ask him for forgiveness, and then go back. Yes. 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 See, yes. if we don't start with the 
witness is more. Yeah. See, you, it's more than one way to witness. Amen. You don't always have to do it verbally. Right. No, you can just throw it through a CD. Come on, oh, come on, somebody. Music, you must have forgotten. Music is ministry. The Bible says that David played the harp. Evil spirits did what? The party from Saul. So all you got to do is start giving them some CDs. And after a while, you'll start seeing their feet pat. After a while, you'll start seeing that old, old, old guy that was coming around that didn't mean them no good. All of a sudden, you'll start saying, well, Reggie had. Oh, Tyler, I had to put Reggie out. Oh, what, 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 Sarah? Oh, I had to put Sarah out. Oh, there must be something on the inside that's changing your life. Amen. And music is ministry. Yeah. And it ministers to the spirit. The Bible says it even soothes the savage beast. Yeah. So it, it ministers to that inward man that dwells on the inside. And that's why sometimes why I say more than one way to witness. Yeah. You can witness through tracks. You can witness through uh, 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 business cards. You can witness through all other sites or sites or tools that God has put in your possession. Yes, man. You can witness through a Bible. You can get somebody a Bible. It may take them five years to read it. But I guarantee you, if they start reading it on a daily basis, change is going to come in their life, whether they want to receive it or not. Amen. But they still can't kick against the prick. Because you read your Bible, that don't mean you, you can't backslide. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, I'm going to sit on somebody's row in a minute. Because you read your Bible, that don't mean you can, back, you can backslide. That don't mean you ain't going to commit a sin no more because you can speak in tongues, problems and battles. The Bible said the spirit and the flesh do what? It wars daily. Sometimes the flesh wins, sometimes the spirit wins. That's what the Bible said. We got to repent daily. Well, you did it in the motel or did it in your mind. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yes. Speaking things into existence is one thing. Yes. But if you don't have the faith in what you are speaking and the works along with your faith, then you are just speaking yes. in vain. Amen. See, a lot of people say speaking into existence, which is true. Yes. But if I don't believe that which I'm speaking, I'm just talking. Amen. But if I don't have faith in what I'm saying, and I don't have no works to, in, to be collaborated with my faith, then all I'm doing is in vain. Because I'm just speaking and speaking and I'm speaking and I'm speaking. I know I ain't really. I'm just, I'm just doing what the preacher says. He just says speak. But no, get you some faith. Get you some faith, brother. Get you some faith, sister. Put some works behind it. When this works, preacher, I'm glad you asked. If you got faith in a job, don't just sit on the couch and say, Lord, give me a job, send a job. No, put some application in. That's the works. Amen. Yes, you have to work at what you want to accomplish in life. That's even your growth in, 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 in Christianity. If you want to grow in the Word, you got to read it. You got to read it. And you can read your Bible. You can read other books that break the Bible down from book to book. There's so much literature out here that anybody that professes to be a, a Christian don't have really no excuse almost. Because there's too much tools out here that can empower your mind. I'm talking about this stuff out here that puts stuff on a third grade reading level. Easy to read Christian books that can give you a vibrant and a powerful point about the Word of God. Right. And it don't take number of seconds to read. You, you ain't got you don't need a thesaurus or a commentary or a strong concordance to interpret what the, what the Bible is saying. Because you got so many people that has been gifted by God to be able to explain Scripture on a level that six and seven year olds can understand. Yes. But you gotta walk. In that divine potential that God has placed on the inside of you. Let's look at uh, Hebrews uh, 6, 12 through 14. Amen. Hebrews 6, 12 